Uh, we ran a good campaign against tremendous headwinds. The numbers are not finalized because there are still outstanding votes in the city, uh, especially mail-in ballots. But as the numbers stand right now, it appears that I will not prevail. I want to hold this press conference today because we don't know what the uh, restrictions may be tomorrow because of the coronavirus. But if the current numbers uh, do hold, I wanted to congratulate Marie Newman on her victory. I already called Ms. Newman and, and spoke with her. As I said during the primary, that I will support the winner of, of the primary. Uh, the outpouring of personal support has meant a great deal to me, especially in the last few days of the campaign, uh, but all through the campaign. The people who came up to me and told me that they appreciate what I stand for and appreciate me standing my ground. And I, I really represent who they are and in, in what they believe. And that meant a lot to me to hear that uh, from so many people across the district. There are a lot of issues that I've worked on during my time in, in Congress, and I still have nine more months uh, to work. Uh, so I'm not going to go into all those issues right now that I think uh, will define my, my legacy as a member of Congress. But there's one issue that loomed especially large in this campaign, the fact that I am pro-life. I was pilloried in millions of dollars of TV ads and mailers because of this. I was shunned by many of my colleagues and other Democratic Party members and operators. I was shunned because of my pro-life stance. The pressure in the Democratic Party on the life issue has never been as great as it is now. Over the years, I've watched many other politicians succumb to the pressure and change their position on this issue. I've always said they would never give up being pro-life and standing up for babies in the womb. Judy and I and tens of millions of Catholics hold and live this belief. But it's not just based on religious belief. It is based on science which shows us that life begins at conception. Knowing this, I can never give up protecting the most vulnerable human beings in the world simply to win an election. My faith teaches, and the Democratic Party preaches, that we should serve everyone, especially the most vulnerable. To stand in solidarity, with the vulnerable is to become vulnerable. There's no higher calling for anyone. But politicians don't like to be vulnerable. So that's what we called, called to be. Right now, everyone in our country, in many other countries, are vulnerable in a way that we never imagined as we faced the coronavirus pandemic. We are a very polarized nation where people are often looking for ways to cause more division. But it's time for us to realize we are all in this fight together. This is a threat that can only be defeated by all of us listening to and following guidance from healthcare experts and caring for the good of our neighbors. Congress and the president must also come together and provide the health care and economic aid that people need. Now is the time for common sense and solidarity. And we can minimize the suffering from this pandemic. And I believe that's what we should all be focusing on right now.